continuing on with the Ashandarai project. The sword spear is well on its way. Today we're going to do the actual spear shaft. The last video I was working on the blade, I got that pretty much built, and in the next video I will finish that and put everything together, but right now let's focus on getting this spear built. Now it's going to be completely out of PVC with the different fittings to attach together. And I'm going to start out with some coupling pieces. Now, I have some pieces that will be internal, and they're threaded, internal and externally threaded, so that the spear can be screwed together, so that you can actually transport it without having this six and a half foot tall prop to try to take somewhere. So the internal fittings need to fit inside of the external couplings so that they are concealed. I've cut my PVC down to the right size for each of the pieces that I need to create. Now, this is just the small upper portion that will be permanently attached to the blade. And then the lower portion is going to be all one piece, so there will be just one joint in the end where it actually unscrews. So I've sanded the edges off so that the internal coupling does fit inside of the external piece. And while I was at the home improvement store, I was just <laughs> playing around for about an hour trying to find pieces that fit together in the way that I needed them to in order to create these joints. I've also got an end cap here. I'm shaving down the bottom part of it because I want it to look like the bottom cap is actually the end of the quote unquote wooden staff sticking out the bottom, uh, but really it's going to be just part of this PVC coupling. And then the upper portion will look like another uh, iron band, just like uh, the other pieces will end up looking. I do want to start taking off the harsh edges on these coupling pieces so they start to look more organic and less recognizable for what they are. Ultimately, I do want them to look like iron bands, as I said, because that's how the, what the prop is supposed to be constructed out of in those parts. Uh, I started out by just doing kind of taking off the shiny uh, edge of the couplings, but I think I'm going to do something else with it a little bit later on because they still look kind of boring and not particularly metallic. To attach the internal couplings, I'm just going to use a plastic riveting method that I kind of came up with for the, the Witch King support structure. It's worked really well, so I'm just going to try that again. I'm just using some bits of filament and an old wood burner. You just burn some nice holes in there, get it a little bit melty, stick in some filament, and then kind of flatten everything out. It makes quite a sturdy joint, but you do have to just make sure that these couplings are actually level or when you screw it together, you're going to have this really crooked looking uh, spear shaft. So it, uh, you know, like four is fine for this. I might have done five on some of them. I'm not really sure, but just kind of bracing it in there with a few of these and it will be quite well attached. And then just sand off any extra filament that's on the outside there. Uh, now I do want this PVC piping to actually look like wood. The PVC is great because it's lightweight, it's really sturdy, and it's easy to attach these nice strong couplings, but I don't want it to look like PVC. <laughs> so I'm using my Dremel, of course with my extension that I always use so that, you know, dude, it takes away so much hand fatigue just having something nice and small to hold instead of the whole heavy Dremel. Um, just start grinding in a wood grain effect. Now just keep in mind how wood grain tends to look and then also just kind of distress it a little bit because we don't want this to look like, you know, it's fresh out of the factory. We want it to look like it's been in use for a while. So there's the, the small piece all done with the wood grain, but we do actually have to do that to the entire, like, I don't know, four and a half foot or so uh, pole that goes, uh, that will be the bottom portion. So I'm trying to keep it as sort of random as possible so it doesn't just look like even lines that I just drew in. I want it to look organic and distressed. So I just kind of worked at it for a little bit while. This is really messy. Let me tell you what, I was sweeping up bits of PVC from my work area for quite a while by the time this was done. And the texture will be a little bit hard to see before we've done the actual paint job, but you can, you can kind of see some there. And we're gonna distress it a little bit later on with the paint too to bring that out a little bit more. It's just gonna be subtle though overall. I just need to sand off the entire thing so that it's pretty smooth and ready for paint later on. The next stage is to actually engrave in some old tongue text. I, I did the best I could with figuring out how to translate this, but I mean, it's not a it's not a full language, so I ended up just having to find 
the the words where they were available and then otherwise I just translated letter for letter for the from English to old tongue I mean it looks pretty cool it gets the idea across <laughs> that's the best I could do with the information that was available this is my first time engraving so it was kind of an interesting experience definitely slow work I spent a few hours on this for sure uh, the the most annoying part with the PVC is it does kind of the little shredded bits stick on a little bit so you keep having to kind of wipe those away and then sand it and then go back over it again but I think the end effect is going to be worth it and it's of course still super durable I have a very very fine engraving tip on there and it worked pretty well by the end though it's it's destroyed it's got like melted plastic in there I guess I could probably scrape it out if I want but I'm not sure that it's really worth it I kept having to reference back to um to the old tongue text when I was sketching it out with the pencil in here because it's like the letters just kind of start looking pretty much the same and have to make find what's different about them and then emphasize that I mean not that anybody's really going to be reading it that closely but just for my own satisfaction I wanted to get it as clear as I possibly could I even got the punctuation right according to what I found on the internet for the for the text that's supposed to be on it and I had to put it on the lower portion of the shaft even though I would have preferred it on the upper portion just because it was so long and there was no way I could have engraved this small enough to fit on that little upper portion especially with it being my first time trying to engrave with this uh this dremel tip um that was that was as detailed as I could get on pvc I think it was it was tough enough trying to keep it clear even of this size so yeah, it looks pretty good. The uh, the PVC leaves all these little bits, like I was saying, so I'm just gonna kind of scrape all of those off as best I can. This is a mix of going back and forth with sanding and scraping till it's nice and legible. Now we can get at least started with the base coat of painting. I'm, I'm using a couple different kinds of spray paint here. It's trying to get you know a good start for some natural variations on there. I don't want it to look like just straight up black in the end, but the I had to start off with black just to get something on there. I actually got some matte black and then just some gray primer that I already had from a previous project. I'm just kind of mixing them together a little bit to just get it started with being all nice and slightly irregular. Definitely wear gloves when you're doing this. I'm kind of trying to get it as thin as possible when I smear it around with my hands because I don't want to fill in all of that nice distressing and engraving that I just did. That will be quite counterproductive and I don't want to cover up all of the white because again I, I just want some variations in there. I'm trying to make this look like some wood that's maybe had a like a dark wax put onto it. That's what I'm going for in the end. And then just general grime build up for something that's actually in day-to-day -day use. It got unexpectedly cold <laughs> on the morning that I was going to be doing this so I was like scrambling around trying to find something warm to put on and the only thing I could find to keep my ears warm was this like scarf with these dangly things so pardon my wardrobe <laughs> you can see on these couplings I just I did sort of a again it, it looks more like wood grain on even on the couplings and actually that's not what I want so I'm gonna go back in with that a little bit later find something different to do but the actual staff part I think is looking a little more wood grainish we'll keep going and adding layers it's always better to go light at first because uh, you can always add another layer later but if you get too much of a paint buildup it doesn't dry very well you might get drips and you're gonna gonna fill in that uh, distressing you got set up let's get going now with some acrylic paints to start getting this a little bit more interesting add some depth to it in the end it's gonna look pretty much black I think but there's a difference between just painting it solid black from the start versus building up layers that have uh, some different variations there in the end it's worth putting a little extra effort into it. It's also a good time to start covering up those welds. I mean, they're not actually going to end up showing. We're going to use the external couplings to cover any of the attachment points, but I prefer knowing that they're covered by paint. <laughs> I'm using a mix of some burnt umber and then sort of an orange rusty color, first of all, to get some more warm tones onto this because the black was fairly cool. And then over top of that, so you've got the warmer tones in the grooves of the faux wood grain. And over the top of that, I'm doing cool tones. So I've got straight up black, but also two different tones of blue, a brighter one and then a more uh, muted blue. I'm allowing variations to show. I don't, I don't want to turn it all just 
one solid color again. And the goal here is to get some different colors, but subtle. <laughs> you gotta get the paint nicely into those grooves so that when we go back in with the gold later, we've got a nice base to start with. Let's get back to those couplings because they're just looking really boring and not particularly metallic. I'm using just this rounded tip on my wood burner. I'm just gonna put some little burnt dots in there. I'm going for sort of a, a beaten metal kind of look. Right now it kind of looks like coral, but <laughs> we'll take care of that later. It took a little bit of time to do uh, all these dots over all of the pieces, but it wasn't too bad. I will say that the fumes got kind of bad. I ended up having to get some ventilation set up because the PVC does have some pretty not so nice fumes. So make sure if you do something like this, you set up you know, fan, filter, whatnot, open windows. Now I gotta s just sand everything down because it got all really rough. <laughs> It's not, not the look that I need. Cleaning everything up around the edges and then again clarifying on the bottom cap to make sure that it looks like uh, two different parts, the bottom of the wood staff plus the, um, the iron band. Give it a light sand with uh, some sandpaper also and then we're ready for some paint since we kind of just burnt off all of the other paint. It was, again, a little stinky. Would have been a better idea to do before I painted, but I didn't know I was going to change my mind. <laughs> So getting a nice base of sort of blacks and browns on there. And then I noticed that this was a little bit too tight around the um, staff portion and I need it to be able to go on and off so that the spear, when it's taken apart, it doesn't, you know, get stuck on there or have difficulty tightening because the, the couplings that are really more for show so that they aren't too tight. Uh, so just sand that down nicely and now they're gonna fit together a little bit better because PVC couplings, they're a really, really, really tight fix. I guess they're not really meant to, you know, be taken apart. <laughs> Usually you're not disassembling your plumbing too often. But that's not quite how quite how I'm using them. So I've got a just a chip brush, those super cheap ones. It's kind of all dry and sticking out in different directions. I'm using that to start adding kind of rusty tones over this because I want to start building up even more variations on these than on the staff. I really want these to stand out as looking kind of metallic, but also just old and kind of a little bit gross and dirty, just to make it more interesting. So I do have yellow in there also. It was looking too plain before I put the yellow in there. I needed something to brighten it up and make it stand out. So just some straight up yellow kind of mixed in there along with the rusty tones and the browns it looked quite nice. And then we do need to actually seal everything now. Keep it nice and thin with the sealer on this because we don't want any blobs in those uh, beaten metal portions. We want it to just seal everything in without being thick. It's not like we're trying to make this super shiny because it's distressed metal anyways. And of course, clean up that bottom portion so it's painted with the coloring of the staff portion, not the coloring of the metal. And we also do need to go ahead and seal uh, the, the rest of the PVC. Also, now that we've got those nice layers of warm and cool tones on there, the variations are quite subtle. Once you have a coating of sealer on there, now we can go ahead and, and add the gold to the text. This is really gonna make it pop and you'll see all that work starting to come out now. By adding that first layer of sealer, it allows me to be able to wipe off the excess paint as opposed to having to try to get it exactly in each little piece of text. It would be, it would be uh, quite a lot more work doing it that way. So I'm just filling in the text, wiping off the excess, and then touching up with more of the black tones. And then we've got to do another coat of sealer to seal in the gold and coppery tones that are now making that text stand out quite nicely. The Ashandurai sword spear shaft is now complete along with its couplings and end cap. Next time I'm going to finish up that blade, get it sanded and filled and do some painting and distressing. It's going to be awesome. And then I'm going to put it all together, glue the parts that need to be glued and, and you'll see how it all kind of fits together. Then we're gonna have this completed, lovely, six and a half foot tall Ashander Eye. It will be majestic. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that now. If you wanna get notified for the next video, then also click the bell. That's it for the moment, but I'll be back soon with the rest of the sword. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.